and uh, equitable um, share of burdens. And you cannot shift all responsibility, all responsibility to the, to the taxpayer as some sort of insurance companies for banks who uh, have uh, uh, made investments which, uh, which do not pay off. So uh, if there is bailout, there should be an equitable uh, share of burdens be according to the risk exposure. Look at the risk exposure of German and uh, French banks in Greece. It's certainly disproportionate to uh, the share Germany has to pay or to afford or to take in order to uh, bail out Greece. So if there is bailout, there must be a bailout according to the creditors' risks, full stop. And the taxpayer, as uh, the lender of last resort, is no alternative at all. Uh, because it's not viable in the long run. If you say, Peter, that if you don't bail out, banks will go bust. So you will, you will, you will be blackmailed by banks. Uh, so that's why it's utterly regret that European politics didn't have the guts to uh, let Greece down and to accept the earthquake of a few months, because then the story would be over and the investors would have known there will be, sorry to say this again, severe punishment, and that there is no risk without reward, and from time to time there is no reward, but there is loss. Uh, the risk, the amount of loss was uh, a volume which could have been digested. Uh, if Greece could not have been digested, who else could be digested? Then uh, you have cases like Spain, where the governments simply lose their sovereignty. Uh, the, the governments are in the hands of banks who say either you bail out, the taxpayer pays all, or we go bust, which brings us to the problem of organizing procedures of um, insolvency for banks, which are underway, and Germany has focused on um, this problem by introducing legislation, bills which have already become act of parliament. But this is a clear, a great point. Thank you for the question. We have to organizing the market exit of banks without damage to the taxpayer. Can you apply that to Ireland, please? Because uh the amount of money owed to German banks is something like 4.4% to German GDP. So it suits very well Germany that the Irish taxpayer, in fact, and not the German taxpayer, uh, should bail out in this instance. The, the risk exposure of Germany for the Irish bailout is, to my knowledge, about 11 billion uh, euros, which is a limited sum of money, I, I admit. The um, risk exposure of so called German banks, which you mentioned, is largely exaggerated. It's due mainly to one bank, which is HRE, which is a bank which is already state owned, because the German state had to take it over. Um, in, uh, let this be remembered if the uh, um, island had been bailed out. This is in order to only to shift money from the European Central Bank to a uh, national tax money because Mr. Trichet was no longer willing to take the risk of uh, fueling by quantitative easing um, an ailing Irish uh, banking sector, because it actually, or potentially, most of the Irish banks were insolvent. Indeed, this, this, uh, this constitutes a different uh, situation to Greece, for instance, or... It's a totally different, it's a totally different, Portugal. it is a totally different, every case, the, 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 no, the, 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 every case is a, an individual case. The Greek case was, was made to set an example. Yeah? Worst governments you can imagine, yeah? raping the benefits of the European Monetary Union to spend more money and to be re-elected. Uh, this was the, the, the recipe of the political class in Greece. And not using the benefits of the, uh, uh, the, the euro in order to consolidate public finance. Ireland is quite a different situation. Uh, uh, I have great faith in the, the, in, in, in the, in the Irish government as, as such. So the uh, Irish was justified? I wouldn't say that. Uh, and uh, uh, I regret that they are, of course, because it leads us away from... Um, the, the task of the European Central Bank and the European community. This was an Irish problem. Uh, and the Irish uh, government had to apply to the International Monetary Fund, uh, not to 
from the European Central Bank and not to the European community. Yeah? So, but the necessity of uh, bridging the gap, uh, I, I wouldn't call this a good question. And I'm quite sure that sooner or later Ireland will be on the, on the path of success again. So you don't have to say Ireland is No, I would say this. I would, I would not urge Ireland to leave the Euro zone. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, White from Bimbo. You were very critical about the ECB and about Mr. Trichet in particular. Do you see any of his actions in the past year and beyond that as illegal? I mean, the liquidity support for banks and the bond purchase program. Well, as you know, um, under the leadership of Mr. Trichet, very soon, um, uh, beginning of the development of the financial crisis, um, a process of qualitative easing has started. Uh, and um, banks have been given unlimited liquidity, which in itself poses a problem. Um, that process must be put to an end as quickly as possible. So I consider that part, or I have already considered that part of the ECB policy, apart from the bailout practices, as critical, as very critical. The ECB does not give statistics, but the European Commission has, which of the banks profit very much from quality easing? Uh, but I can tell you that um, banks in the well, states with not so solid public finance uh, profit far more benefit far more from quality easing than other banks, which creates a second distortion of competition between the banks, because banks which should get money or be fueled by central banks. Uh, at a certain price, get unlimited uh, liquidity, which is an error in itself. Uh, so, um, my criticism of the European Central Bank does not start with the factory bailout and purchase of bonds, but it starts with the uh, qualitative easing uh, in uh, uh, 2008. And it um, concerns as well what I, what I would consider the, the gravity of. of uh, declaratory errors of Mr. Fichet. I will remind you of the press conference on the 6th of May. Uh, he was asked by your profession, um, has it been uh, discussed in the ECB Council uh, whether or not um, bonds or something that uh, could, be, could eventually be purchased? And he said, knowing very well what, a, what an effect, what an impact such an answer could have, no, this has not even been discussed. Some minutes later, he was asked the same question, and he rejected to respond. And he was asked the question a third time, and he said, as I told you before, it has not even been discussed. So if the European Central Bank hasn't even discussed, I'm quite sure they have discussed, but if they communicate this, I am not surprised uh, that, uh, that, 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 that the market stands still. Yeah? But do you see his actions or the actions of the bank as 